Hey everyone, it is May 1, 2014. I'm Rene Ritchie, and right now we're gonna take a look back at some video and audio highlights of the last seven years and 400 episodes of what was. Then we're gonna dive straight into what will be. This is the iMore Show. Phone Different Podcast number one for July 30th, 2007. That date's like a deadline. <laughs> I have to have it done. All right. So, yes, it's our first uh, Phone Different podcast. About the iPhone. About the iPhone. That's right. Um, uh, I'm, I'm Dieter Bone, but uh, this is... I'm Mike Overbow. Right. Yep. And uh, so it's a new podcast. hey oh, hey oh. Uh, this, is, this is Mike Overbow, and uh, we have a big crowd for you today to talk about the iPhone 3G. We have Dieter. Hey. We have Brian Hart. We have Aunt, uh, Renee Ritchie. Hello. Hello. Uh, we should identify ourselves by voice. Uh, actually, me, you guys should, because they might yes. actually know my voice by now. This is Dieter. This is Mike. This is this Brian. Aw. <laughs> this is Renee. <laughs> They're new to this. All right. <laughs> the iPhone blog presents iPhone Live for Wednesday, October 29th, 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, Dieter Bone. Greetings, mobile accomplishers. It is good to be here. It's our first time, so if we have we've had some technical difficulties, uh, let us know in the in the chat. But uh, we might not be able to fix everything right away. <laughs> also joining us is Chad, also known as I Chad Man. Hey everybody, glad I can make it tonight. I'm excited. The iPhone blog presents iPhone Live number seventy nine. La la juju. Chad, that was a tremendous delivery. Thanks, Pernay. I've been practicing all day. Chad Garrett, one of our writers, and we're also joined today by one of our new writers, Georgia. Welcome, Georgia. Thank you very much. TipB.com presents TipB Live number 88, explicit for Wednesday, February 24th, 2010. Hi, everyone. This is Renee Ritchie, and this is Tippy Live, the live version of the Tippy.com podcast, where we discuss all things iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. But first, let me welcome my co-host for the evening, Mickey from the Cell Phone Junkie. How's it going, Mickey? I'm doing great, Renee. Great to be here, as always. Hi, this is Travis from Moline, Illinois. My favorite iPad app is Air Video, and my favorite podcast is iPad Live. Tippy.com presents iPad Live number one, our magical and revolutionary new podcast for April 25, 2010. Well, Leanna is in the United States of Can Has iPad. Um, how are you doing, Leanna? I'm doing good. How are you, Renee? Good. And you had your Tippy.com presents iPhone Live number 102, 8T and tiered for June 2nd, 2010. Hi, I'm Georgia. And I'm Renee. And this is Tippy TV. Hey everyone, this is Renee Ritchie from Tippy.com. It's December 5, 2010, and this is iPad Live. Very excited that we have a special guest. We do. Joining us. No, no, that's Chad. He made it on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us, who is our special guest tonight? Well, we have our first winner for So You Think You Can Podcast Contest, and it's Seth Clifford. Woo! Yay! Woo! And he's wearing an I Void Warranty t shirt. Kudos Woo! to you, sir. Well, you know, I, I was torn between my three Tron shirts, but then I. It's Sunday, October 30th, 2011, and you know what that means, right? That's right. It's Halloween. And come join us in the costume tonight, co host of Iterate and CIO of Nickelfish. Our own Darth Vader, Seth Clifford. It's very <laughs> sticky in here. <laughs> well, I, I love how dedicated you are to the cause. You look great. Thank you. All, also joining us is the editor-in-chief to Tippy.com and my co-host on Zen and Tech, Renee Ritchie. Now, I'm Gumby, Renee. damn it. Shannon, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Having now, a fun day. I got 
to an iPhone 4S from the future, Marty. Forget this. I'm oh, sorry, Renee. You need an iPhone 5 now. This is Georgia from Tippy.com. Welcome to our weekly show focused on everything iPhone and iPad. From news and how-tos to app and accessory reviews, this is iPhone and iPad Live. Listen, Renee, after that intro, I know what you're planning to do. Let me tell you, if you do it, you're going to get flamed and trolled. Well, that's a big problem. See, I've already prepped all the art and the feeds. Already? <laughs> Come on, man, be reasonable. Yeah, iMar has its reputation to consider. All I'm saying is, choose the new name carefully, Renee. It may be your last. Flamed and trolled? Madman. You're a madman. Flamed and trolled? I get plenty of that on the internet already. No man, producer, or podcaster changes names this much. I watch that montage, and I see all those names. Phone Different Podcast, iPhone Live, Tippy Live, iPad Live, Tippy TV, iPhone and iPad Live. I see the lack of elegance. I see the lack of insane simplicity. Oh, I've chosen a new name carefully. Perhaps Georgia should have done the same on Twitter. This is silly. This is so goofy. No. This is iMore. Georgia and joining us today is 9 to 5 Max ace reporter himself, Mark Gurman. Hey, Mark. Hi, Georgia. Thanks for having me. Ah, oh, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Also joining us is the Next Web's news and Apple editor, Matthew Panzerino. Hey, Matt. Hello. How are you doing? I am uh, thrilled to have Clayton Morris from Fox News General Technology. Guru. How are you doing, Clayton? <laughs> I'm doing great, Renee. Thanks for having me on the show. So, uh, my guest this evening is the renowned Guy English of Kicking Bear fame, Singleton fame, and soon to be uh, aged and distilled napkin fame. How are you doing, Guy? Very good. You? I'm a Montreal Pokemon. You're the Stormtrooper. Oh, <laughs> That's not even my day job. My day job now is a you know kind of early stage investor. Yeah, you 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 jumped the fence. Yeah. Yeah, so, but, uh, you know, I try and keep the writing up uh, when I can. Ryan Block of Gadget. Ryan, how are you? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me again. The senior mobile editor, or one of the senior mobile editors from The Verge, Dieter Bowen. How are you, Dieter? I am doing very well. How are you? Here we have it, an iHelicopter, a lightweight helicopter that you can control with your iPhone. <laughs> is the editor-in-chief of The Loop, loopinsight.com, Jim Dalrymple. How are you, Jim? I'm doing good. How are you, Rennie? Yeah. Publisher and editorial director of the 9 to 5 Empire, which includes 9 to 5 Mac, 9 to 5 Google, and 9 to 5 Toys. Mr. Seth Weintraub, Seth, how are you? I'm good. I'm the founder of Mac Rumors. He also has some other websites you might have heard of, App Shopper and Touch Arcade. It is Mr. Arnold Kim. How are you, Arn? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Me tonight is the senior smartphone expert from Anantech, Brian Kluke. How are you, Brian? I'm awesome. Thanks for having me on, Renee. Go, go, go. No, no, no! Someone who knows all about too much track padding is our how-to editor and a resident ninja in charge, Ali Kazmuha. How are you, Ali? I'm good. Stina Warren. The lovely and talented. Girl, the awesome, I have to use that word because people get upset if I don't, the <laughs> awesome Christina Warren from Mashable. Awesome, awesome to be here. And last but certainly not least, the lovely and beautiful <laughs> Crackberry Kevin Mitchelluk. How are you, Kevin? I have three names out First of all, we have iMore's brand new Mac and gaming editor. You might also know him from fine establishments such as uh, The Loop and also the Angry Mac Bastards. How are you, Peter? Fine. Thank you, Renee. Joining me right now, we have senior editor from iMore, Richard Devine. How are you, Richard? Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm good, Renee. How are you? <laughs> also joining us, a videographer from iMore, someone who makes all of us look good, Anthony Casella. How are you, Anthony? I am doing excellently. Thank you, Renee. Coolest oh tech with us! Georgia! It's Georgia and Renee from 
Ibor. It's What's Kevin happening, and John P. How are you? These are who we're doing CES Live with. We have John P, we have Callie Lewis, and we have the entire Mobile Nations crew. Wow, so many years, so many guests, so many hosts, and so many amazing listeners and viewers. I want to thank each and every one of you and each and every one of them. But that's what was. Let's go on to what is. So here they are, our special guests, returning from such great previous productions as the I'm More Show number 300. First of all, um, because she could beat both of us up, we have uh, Georgia Dow joining us. How are you, Georgia? I'm, I'm doing great. It's amazing to be back. I can't believe it. It was like a year ago. Uh, let's see. Uh, IMAPs were barely functional. Siri wasn't able to understand my accent. And Apple was tied up in patent wars. It's amazing how tech changes so quickly. In Nothing's the changed. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Also joining us, we have the CIO of Nickelfish and one of my favorite internet personalities, Seth Clifford. Hello. Hello. It's good to be back. So it's been a while. We're at episode 400 now. Four zero zero. I can't believe it. I can't believe we've talked this much. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, I haven't talked to you in a while, but... Uh, Iterate, yeah. Seth. No, I know, I know. But uh, I, I miss being on the show here. I miss it. I miss the, uh, the weekly constant uh, barrage of people telling us we're doing things wrong. I miss, uh, you know, I miss the Apple fanboy slurs. It's, it's really, you know, there's a gap in my life. Right. Well, uh, you did, in our defense, you did go off and vastly increase the size of your mobile development and marketing uh, company empire, and you also released a biological product. No, that's true, actually. Yeah, I've, I've been very, very busy. The company's grown significantly, and uh, now I have a wonderful little daughter who's taken up a lot of my time, but I would not even begin to complain about that. But we might have you back on occasion, is that correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. My, my schedule is opening up a little bit, so I would be happy to slot in whenever you'll have me. Awesome. And Georgia, you have been continuing your Zen and tech empire. That I have. That and work. Um, yeah, I've been really, really busy as well. Um, though it's really cool to be here and get to chat and to, yeah. I can't believe we haven't been canceled yet. <laughs> they tried. Fox keeps trying to cancel. <laughs> they can't take this guy from Barely me. human was canceled, yet we, who are barely human, are still here. So since we last spoke, Apple has, re has introduced a slew of new products, and we are on the verge of WWDC 2014. So let's look back before we look forward, and we'll start with Seth this time. Seth, what do you think of the current slate of iOS devices? And I believe you might have a thing or two to say about iOS 7. <laughs> I, think, I think the current slate of iOS devices is pretty good. I've had... Plenty of issues along the way this past year since iOS 7 was released. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dig them all up again. I've I've exhausted. I think all I need to say about them. We can we can do that any number of times. But uh, my my big standout for the year has been the iPad Air. I mean, when I picked that up, it really, really changed the way I use that device. Just because of the the hardware changes, the form factor, the fact that it was a little bit lighter. I remember saying, you know, maybe a year or so ago that. All I really wanted was a full-size iPad before I had the Mini. All I really wanted was a full-size iPad with that kind of feel of like that iPod Touch, that back. And I finally got it, and I I use it constantly. I can't put it down. I think it's a tremendous device. Um, the you know the changes in the phone are awesome, but the iPad Air has been my my standout for this past year. I am really excited to see a bigger screen phone though. I've been wanting that for a while, and I think like I'm really really ready to make that jump. All right, so one, one more question before we switch to Georgia. We had an iterate right after WWDC 2013 where every <laughs> big designer on the planet, from the Pacific Helm guys to Sebastian DeWitt, Lauren Brichter, all of them had reservations about iOS 7. Flash forward to Macworld, and we had many of them back on the stage with us, and even Louis Mantia had turned around on iOS 7. Seth, have you, have you likewise come to terms with it? Have you, have you got learned helplessness for iOS 7 yet? I have, I've come to terms with it because it's the world we have to live in, right? So basically, I've, I've made my peace with it. There's plenty that I still question and shake my head at on an almost daily basis, but there are, there are aspects of it that have really grown on me. There are things that it has forced me to think about as we work through you know, problems and, and trying to find solutions for designing apps that 
I just would not have come to before. So it, it has forced me to reshape my thinking about what goes into a good app and what a good app experience is today. But, you know, there are, there are still those rough edges that I really hope iOS will smooth out. I mean, uh, iOS 8. All right, so before we get to that, Georgia, what do you think? iPhone 5S, iPad Air, iPad Mini Retina Display, how's Apple doing? I, I love the iPad Mini. Um, I love the Apple, I, uh, the iPad Air even more. I love the bezeled look. It matches with the phone. I know, aesthetics. It is really light, and I thought that I wouldn't like a smaller iPad, but it's nice. It's light. It's easy to carry around. I have this cute little Lilium bag that actually is right here. It actually fits your iPad Air in it. It's adorable. It's just really, it's really efficient, quick, and beautiful at the same time, so I absolutely love it. Um, so yeah, I love the new stuff that Apple's coming out with. I'm still waiting for something, though, um, which I am hoping for. And um, as for iOS 7, it's nice. I, I have some problems with icons. It's a little bit slow. I get some slowdown on my iPhone 5. Yeah, you didn't um, upgrade, right? As is your want. As is my want, as that I am trashed for never always. I, I will upgrade it if the necessity be, and if there's something that I actually need in the upgrade, I will upgrade, but I actually read. The, I don't just hit update now for everything, and the same thing for my OS. Is, I'll be honest, the, it's not actually that I didn't want to upgrade. I upgraded. It took me forever to upgrade. Um, I still have an update waiting on my phone, but that's more that I have no memory on my phone right now. Uh, because I have to delete videos, and so I have to upload everything to the cloud when but I post But you've got no pressing need to get an iPhone 5S this time. No, but I don't usually. I, I'll wait two years in between a phone. I don't need to have the newest and greatest immediately after. I like, you know, I get to use you. You have all of the, the best tech, like, moments after it's out. So I guess it tests everything out as well, and then I wait until it's going to be a larger phone, that is what I'm waiting for, and then I'll upgrade. Seth, I can hear her talking, but I, I can't parse the words. No need to upgrade to the latest iPhone. <clears throat> well, uh, in all seriousness, I still have my 5. I didn't get a 5S oh, this year. Oh, there you go. You see? Yeah. You see? I didn't, I, when it, Why didn't you, Seth? Well, when it came out, I just looked at it and thought, aside from Touch ID, which was interesting, there really wasn't enough compelling stuff about it that I really needed to go out and get it. I figured that my 5 would be okay for a while. If I decided, you know, a month later I can't take it and I really need it, I would go get it. But then time just kept kind of moving along and I never really got around to getting it. At this point, I'm just going to wait. I, I think it's cool. A lot of people at the office have it. I've spent plenty of time with it, but my 5 works fine and I don't think there's ever been a year that I haven't upgraded. I've always gotten the new phone. You know, sometimes iPads I'll skip a year, but yeah, this was the first year. I just didn't feel like I needed it. That's why Apple is doomed because you guys didn't upgrade. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I don't. I think Apple's doing just fine, but I actually don't like. Didn't like the idea of having Touch ID on the phone, anyways. So that definitely was not a pull for me. It might have even been a pull on the opposite side of not getting it because of that. So you know, it's beautiful, Renee. You have uh, the pretty gold one, but it's gold's the only acceptable off. color. And plus, I always buy an unlocked phone, so I'm spending you know, $700 on a phone, when in a year I'm going to buy another phone. And, and I have to say that the 5 is just stunning. It's beautiful. It's quick. I like the look to it. So, you know, it was, I, I didn't need to. All cool right, so let me ask you guys enough. this, because um, the iPad Air and the Retina iPad Mini are now uh, small differences in color gamut and processor uh, speed aside are virtually identical except for the size of their screen. So Seth, have you found yourself gravitating more to one or the other? Yeah, I was, you know, I've had the larger iPads all along. Last year I ordered the mini for the office, played with it, decided I didn't like it, and then a few months later came around and realized my true undying love for it. Um, I was all set to get a mini again, but then I actually played with the Air and at first was taken aback by its comically large icons and, you know, huge UI compared to what I was used to. But the more I actually played with them, because we had both of them in the office, the more I played with them, I realized that for me right now, the Air was the better device. And for the stuff that I really wanted to do, which was, you know, a lot more, you know, sketching on it itself and, you know, a lot more stuff with 
music and things like that that just benefited from the slightly larger screen size, I ended up making that you know my personal go-to, and I, I skipped the mini. Hmm. What about you, Georgia? Well, I I like both. I think they're they're just different. If you're going to be carrying something around, it's nice to carry something that's really really light. If I'm going to be uh, playing a game or surfing the internet, I like to have the bigger real estate just because it makes everything a little bit easier. So I like the air. I like the look also of the air. I think that it looks really uh, kind of cool. It has a nice effect to it. So I gravitate to larger is better. So you also <laughs> finally went Sorry. and bought your parents an iPad, correct? I did, I did. I got the Mini. They have the Mini, and they're loving it. My mom actually knows how to use the Mini. She only plays casino games, which is hilarious, but um, she just plays them, at, and, and she keeps on worrying. <laughs> She's like, when, when do I get this money? I'm like, you never get the money. <laughs> what do you mean I don't get the money? money? That's exactly what she says, and I have to keep on you know, getting her credits or delete the game and reinstall the game so that she can play again. But she's starting to use it. She's also able to use it for um, taking pictures and video, and that's a big deal. If she can use this iOS, it's a big deal for the iOS. Um, but I, I do have a funny story about that. So I wrote down a list of all the different things to do for my mom. Because if not, she'll be calling me because she can't access her casino game and she needs to access her casino game now. So I wrote down a list of things to do. So she comes up to me and she's so proud of herself. She's like, mom, I like she goes, she doesn't have Wi-Fi or data on her mini. So whenever it comes up, I told her to just turn it off. So she goes, Georgia, the, the Wi-Fi thing, the Wi-Fi thing turned on, but you'll be so proud of me. I just did what you said and hit the iPad. And it turned off. And I went, what do you mean, Mom? What do you, what do you mean you, you hit the iPad? She's like, I, I hit, and she's like smashing. She's like, I hit the iPad. I'm like, no, Mom, no, Mom, you're not supposed to hit the iPad. And she's like, no, that's what you told me to do. So I'm reading my little notes, and on one of them it says, you know, like hit enter. <laughs> so she's been. Sm I'm lucky that it's not. And your mom is Scotch, so that glass. makes sense. Exactly. Is your mom so, Fonzie? My mom is. My mom is like Fonzie on technology. You know, so I I had to rewrite it because if I told her and I said it's glass, mom, it's glass and thin and tiny. You can't actually do it. And my mom, I I might have been hit by her. I know it. It she can hit pretty hard. So <laughs> I was like. Okay, so I rewrote it and Phrasing. told her, don't do that, please. <laughs> press. It means press. And she always touches it with her nail, and I'm like, no. You know, capacitive. Skin. Skin Has your contact. daughter tried the iPad yet, Seth? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've used it a little bit. We have not done a lot of app stuff. It's been mostly, uh, you know, watching Elmo videos and Yo Gabba Gabba mm -hmm. episodes. But she... She definitely knows what it is. Like, if I take it out, it's iPad, iPad. Like, she learned it <laughs> as soon as I told her what it was. That was all I heard for a while. So I've been kind of hesitant to let her really spend a lot of time with it because we're trying to get her to play with physical toys and do that. Like, she's going to have plenty of time being my kid to be around screen. So I'm, I'm doling it out in very small pieces. But when it comes out, she definitely gravitates toward it. She... She launches apps and backs out of stuff, and it's shocking how quickly they pick that interface up. And she just bangs away at the home button. Like, she just knows. Her little finger just knows exactly where to hit. So we do a lot of stuff with guided access. <laughs> <laughs> and since the last time we spoke, you also switched from a MacBook Pro to a MacBook Air, correct? Yeah, I did. I got um, right... At last year at WWDC, right after they were announced, I picked one up that week, and it has been just a huge, a huge sea change for the way I work on a notebook. It's been probably the best Mac I've ever used, and that's Ooh. you know not not like nostalgia speaking because there's plenty of Macs through my Mac history that have been really close to my heart, but in terms of its size and its power, I mean, I got the, the maxed out 13 inch, so it's got a big SSD and 8 gigs of RAM, but it is fantastic. I don't think I wait for anything to happen on this computer. It's also my first SSD, which was a long time coming, but it's fantastic. It's a wonderful machine. What, what size did you get? Uh, 13. And that's a 12 hour battery life, which allows me to shut down coffee shops. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a, This thing just goes and goes and goes for days if I don't plug it in. It's crazy. I am thinking of upgrading my Air because my Air is now getting 
it's getting slow in a little bit. Like it doesn't turn on all the time when I have it. You and have the original 11 inch, correct? I have the original 11 inch, which I love. I love it. I love it. But I, I don't have the backlit keyboards, which um, would be really helpful. Um, and it's it's now getting to, to to deal with its wear. Though I have to say, I've even dropped it a couple of times, and it's still it. <laughs> I'm a little clumsy. You'll remember the donut incident. Um, <laughs> the donut incident. I saved the donuts instead. If you have not heard, I saved the donuts. My, I was holding donuts, and my phone was on top of the donut box, um, and the donut box fell down, and I saved the donut box and let my phone crash and burn. Uh, and the worst part is the donuts were all the leftovers. You know, the, the healthy ones that no one eats? There's so. no healthy donuts. <laughs> the, healthier, healthy donuts. the ones without the sugar on the top and the on the top. The ones that no one really wants. I actually was so angry I threw out all the donuts that I risked my phone. You um, saved the donuts only to kill them in the end. I know. So it was all save, for naught. Save the cheerleader, save the world. I made the wrong pick. It's like you're, you're Kirk at the end of Star Trek 2. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so Seth, there's, if, there's, yeah. if rumors are to be believed there might be a Retina MacBook Air coming, would that appeal to you if it cost battery life or if it had other limitations or is the battery life part and parcel with what appeals to you with the air? Um, <clears throat> I actually spend a lot of my time at my desk plugged into an external display, which is obviously not a giant Retina display. So the non-Retina MacBook Air has not been an issue for me. Um, there are a couple Retina MacBook Pros in the office, and I've used them, and they're great, and they're beautiful machines. But I, I don't know. I really like Retina on the, the mobile devices because that screen just... You know, it feels so much more immersive than my laptop does. I I think if the battery life hit was negligible, I would probably just upgrade because it's going to be fabulous. But you know, if it was like half or something like that, which I can't imagine it would be, but if it was if it was a marked decrease in battery life, I don't think I would bother just because having the freedom to not worry about this and like if I go on a trip or I'm in an airport and I can't charge or I'm on a long flight and I can't charge the computer just keeps going like there's no question about its you know its viability so i've gotten so used to that and uh... you know the ipad air is the same way that battery just goes and goes and goes so it is it is now a part of the way i use my tech so it would be kind of a, a change for me to, to lose it and you georgia do, when you say you were thinking of upgrading are you thinking of upgrading to a new eleven inch would you go to thirteen inch would it appeal to you if there was a retina twelve inch air I, I would definitely stick with the 11 inch. It's light, it's easy to transport, it doesn't take up a lot of space and that means a big difference for me because I'm often carrying a lot of book work and other things and it's really heavy and it's also easy for me to hide so that I can like leave it in, on my desk or do something else with it and it doesn't take up a lot of space on my desk that I'm already doing a lot of paperwork on. I would not. I would definitely choose battery life over a retina display. I think it's beautiful to look at, but in the end, my lap, my Mac, uh, my MacBook Air is used for usability. And if I, I hate plugging it in, I hate trying to find a um, cord, even if it's right next to me. It's a little bit of a mild annoyance. Once I'm doing work, I want to stay doing work. So to be able to use it for 10 to 12 hours is amazing and to lose a couple of hours of work just to look a little prettier I don't think it's worth it for me in the manner in which I use my MacBook Air so I would definitely not choose um, you know it to look really good versus to have battery life on it alright so let's get more into the future WWDC Seth what are, what are your biggest wildest wishes is iOS 8 uh, OS 10, 10.10, is it a game store for the Apple TV? Is it maybe a wearable? What are you looking forward to? I, well, quite honestly, I am really at the point now where I'm looking at Apple's offerings and I'm starting to feel like things are getting spread a little too thin. I really want this year to be focused on solidifying the platforms. Now, if, if OS mm -hmm. 10, 10.10 10 comes out and it's you know, a, a radical redesign the way iOS 7 was. A lot of people are expecting that. That's fine. If, you know, not a lot of new stuff under the hood is introduced, that's fine. If it breaks things the way that iOS 7 has at times broken things for me, that's going to be a problem because I I really depend on my Mac to be bulletproof. And Mavericks did that, Seth. No, I know. I know. Mavericks has its issues, and that's an entirely different show. But... Um, day in and day out, my Mac is reliable. You know, like I really don't think about it when I use it. There are glitches here and there, like with you know mail and stuff like that. But 
I just want stability. I want everything to be sharpened and polished and better and stronger. And I don't need a lot of new stuff this year. I really need it to be like a leopard to snow leopard transition where things just get faster and better and are are made, you know, more solid. And I'm afraid that the way the market is going, there's a lot of focus on the way things look, and it's getting harder and harder to do those kind of under the hood things that nobody sees and really kind of only people like us appreciate because we're looking for them, you know. Snow Leopard. Yeah, Snow Leopard was just a tremendous release. You know, I don't I don't really care about a wearable. I don't need new stuff for the Apple TV. I just want the things I use every day to be a little bit better. That's really what I want, and that's what I hope that they're going to focus on because the more they try to do each year, the, the, you know, the, the wider that focus gets spread, and I feel like things are slipping through the cracks. Georgia, do you not care about a wearable too? <laughs> I really want my wearable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm, I'm waiting patiently. They teased me with the uh, Nano. It, it makes a beautiful watch or band of any sort. I would love that. I think that it would be fun. I would use it. I'm still loving my Pebble, but... Oh, yeah, tell us about your Pebble. You hadn't had a Pebble last time we talked. I, I love the Pebble. I love the Pebble. It's really, really wonderful. It has turn by turn, so if you're, you know, if I'm lost as I often am, I can. It will tell me where to go. It allows me to quickly check to make sure that all of my people are safe without disrupting anything else. I can check if someone's calling me, if it's an important call or not, without having to get my phone out of my briefcase or my purse or my pocket. So I think that it's really useful and helpful. I love it. It also has a cute little shake feature so that the light turns on. I I love my Pebble, but I'm still waiting for my iWatch. What would you I'll want an iWatch to do? Sorry, what would you want an iWatch to do that the Pebble doesn't? Or do you just think that Apple would make a nicer overall product? I think that Apple has a full capability to make a nicer overall product. I would like it to have a mic in so that I can speak and answer the phone on my watch and a lot of people say that that's not really feasible or it's going to take up too much space or how are they going to talk and I I think that Apple can do it I would love that so that I don't have I do, and I want to be able to even maybe have a yes no feature so that if someone texts me I could say like you know a quick set of like maybe later or even better to be able to use Siri to answer the texts immediately into the watch so that I don't have to do it and I would love to have a Jarvis feature so that I can feel a little bit like Iron Man and I can, you know, ask Siri to, um, you know, do stuff for me and it's going to fix up my, you know, change this date to that or make an alarm for me right through my watch. Yeah, I want Jarvis. What about the health stuff? Does the health stuff appeal to you at all? The health stuff to me is nice. I'm... I, I don't think that I would use that as much as other people would. I think that it would be great if it could take my blood pressure if I'm working out so that I would know exactly what it is. I think that it would, you know, I think that it would be great for people with diabetes to be able to have their um, blood sugar level kept uh, tracked of. But I also do worry about, again, with security, who has access to this. You know, if the NSA asks for something, are, is Apple going to give it to them? And then they know that... You know, I'm. You know, I've been eating way too many donuts, um, and I shouldn't be. Well, I mean, I'm asking because the first four episodes of Zen and Tech were breathing, exercise, nutrition, and sleep, and those look to be core functions of where Apple's going with health. So, would it be helpful, or do you think people wouldn't use it? Or, you know, to make the same joke over and over again, would they be happier with an iWatch that spat out cheeseburgers? <laughs> they might. I think that if they, if it was something that they're already using, that it would be really useful. If it's something that you know gives nice time, it has a nice look to it. If it, it easily inter it has an easy interface, which the Nano did not really have. So if it has a good interface, I think people would use it. And once they get comfortable with it, as with everything else, it'll become part of their life. And it's nice to have a little monitor if if someone's saying you know put down the cheeseburger, that you're like okay maybe I'll put it maybe I'll listen this time. <laughs> Or, you know, if it prompts you, you know, great, you know, let's, it's time to do some exercise. Or you've made your 300th step, you know, bells and whistles. It is nice to have a little bit of an encouraging feature. Um, or if it's like, I know that you've taken 600 bites now of, you know, cookies. You know, maybe you should stop or a little warning system. Put I think that cookie back listen. in the box. <laughs> Put that bunny back in the box, yes. So uh, switching gears, Seth, what about a bigger phone? Does that appeal to you? Does the idea of a 4.7-inch or even a 5.5-inch iPhone make sense to you? Yeah, it absolutely does. I, you know, I play with just about everything out there just because I want to get it, you know, the lay of the land. And uh, 
a bigger screen is something that I think we definitely need. I, I think the more stuff that people are doing with these devices, the more a bigger screen lends itself to doing those things more easily. <clears throat> there was a time when I thought that it wasn't really worth the trade-off of pocketability and, and you know, one-handed feel, but I think that that time is probably past, and using some of the larger Android devices and Windows Phone things that are out there, they really are great. Now, there is, for me at least, a point of diminishing returns where the screen just becomes a little bit too big, and you know whether it's in one dimension or another or just overall a little too big. I've used phones that felt a little too tall, but the width was right. I've used phones that like are a little too wide, but the height was right. Phones that are just completely egregiously large that nobody should ever use because they're preposterous. But what hey, size do you like? Now? People like them. You know, I, I think that there's definitely room for that kind of device, and I'm really looking forward to seeing if they can pull it off without completely destroying, you know, the app ecosystem. Because I think my Nexus 5 and my Nokia Lumia 1020 are the same size, but the Nexus just feels smaller when I hold it. And there's, there's the screen size is the same, but I think there's a lot you can do with the body or the design that makes it feel smaller. Yeah, I think I think definitely the hardware and the way that the device is crafted lends itself to how it feels in the hand, which sounds like a completely obvious statement, but there are phones that are physically much, much larger, but do not feel larger in your hand, and there are phones that are smaller that feel like the, the mass of them in their hand feels like more of a chore to hold and use, so I'm really curious to see how thin and how wide and how tall the device is. I don't think 5.5 five is, is the sweet spot for me. I think 4.7 is probably just about perfect, though. What about you, George? I'm I'm dying for a larger phone. I've been waiting. I'm really excited. Um, I I think that we need it. Um, you know, 4.75. I think six or seven. It's it's you know just huge. You might as well be using. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of the you know people that are holding phones that are like you know the 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 phablet kind of thing. Tablet. They're 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 that's too large for me and and unwieldy. And I might as well just be making calls off of my mini. But I think that that would be wonderful just to have a phone with a little bit more real estate, a little bit more space to do it. And Apple can make things that are exceptionally thin and lightweight already. So I don't worry that it's going to be something that's going to be heavy or that's going to look bulky or that's going to be uncomfortable in your palm. As long as I can hold it with my tiny little hands, you know, with one hand, I don't actually have to have my thumb reach all the way across the screen. I don't do that anyways. So that would be fine for me. So, Seth, people say, though, you know, oh, but it's going to make life ter terrible for developers. And as a developer, I, I think it's safe to assume that Apple doesn't have you topmost in their priority list. No, they, they never have. Apple has themselves topmost, which is how companies work, and that should be a surprise to exactly no one. But then following that, I mean, what makes Apple work is how its consumers see it and how they interact with its products. So right after the company is the people who are buying the product. And then, you know, developers fall in somewhere after that. You know, I don't know if we're before or after shareholders. That depends on who you ask. But, um, you know, understanding how developers build apps and people buy apps, and that's kind of like the gas that makes the engine go, it it really is not a concern to them. The the You know, history has shown that they're more focused on what users see than what developers see, and anybody who's looked at iTunes Connect for more than five minutes can tell you that. You know, that the entire developer tool suite is, aside from Xcode, which is, you know, actively maintained, is pretty lackluster. But that said, they do try to not make things utterly difficult, but they have to take steps that make the ecosystem grow in the ways that they think it's going to be sustainable. Now, letterboxing on apps as you know the iPhone 5 came out was just a necessary thing to do so that we could run those apps and then people just had to update for height. I don't know that there's going to be a simple solution for when the entire dimensions of the phone increase. I don't think it's going to be effortless, but I think it's something that people will willingly do because it's just the next logical step to take and you know there'll be a lot of griping about it, but that's where everything is headed. So it's it's inevitable. And it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, George, it's a little bit of pain now for a much better future. Right. I think that it's just the way that, that phones are heading. And as long as Apple keeps the phone to be friendly and comfortable and doesn't make it, you know, again, really, really unwieldy or something that, again, we're probably going to have to buy a whole bunch of new tech to fit with our phone, which is a little bit of an annoyance every time they change, um, you know, how you charge your phone 
or you know all of your cases that you have to deal with but I think that you know Apple has a great idea of making sure that their phones and it's one of the boons that Apple does is to make sure that these phones are really really comfortable for new people coming into phones uh, you know Apple has one of the easiest user I find has one of the easiest user faces to interact with so you know as long as the phones a little bit larger and does not drive everyone crazy in order that the applications work and work effortlessly in the change I think that it's going to work out really nicely. So last question before I have to let you guys go. Um, Seth, could, if Apple made a phablet style device, would you prefer that to phone and tablet or do you think it's still <laughs> better to have discrete categories like that? I go back and forth on this. I feel like if that was the only thing offered to me, I would probably dig it and make it work. But I do, I do really like having two. There are times when I want something smaller and tucked away um, and there are times when I want to have a slightly larger screen and kind of put my phone aside and either get into an activity on that larger iPad or just, you know, kind of do whatever, just, you know, lose myself in a, in a larger screen with a movie. Uh, you know, it's hard to say that one would be okay. I do occasionally wear a suit. I would find it hard to tuck away a massive phone in a suit pocket or, like, the pocket of my pants because it's just not always going to be the right thing and I don't want to like pop my sim out and drop a you know drop it in a new phone every time I change clothes so I think for me personally I like that there is a small and then a large device and something in between may work for some people but I, st I still think there's definitely cause to have both. What about you George? I mean you saw our friends Callie Lewis and John P using their Galaxy Note threes, I think, at Las Vegas. Uh, do you think that's better than, than both things separate, or do you think there's a place for both? I think that there's a place for both for myself. I, I like to have something that's small, discreet, that I can carry with it. A lot of my pockets, I would not be able to bring my, my phone around with me if I had something larger, so I like something that I can kind of keep tucked away. I would love to have one interface so that I can, you know, just plug my phone into my laptop and it becomes my laptop at the same time, and I can just bring everything with me instead of having to cloud share and to email and to everything else. But I, I like to have a smaller device, and to be able to, you know, sit and not everyone else is going to be able to read what I'm doing or to see what kind of text is coming in or to be watching my movie with me. I like to have that privacy and to be able to carry it around without the weight and the bulk of that. And then sometimes I like to play my games and like to have a lot more space and... <clears throat> You know, usually that would be in the comfort of my own home, and then I, I have a larger area of real estate in order to work on. So I do like both, and I think that I use them in different ways. Nice. All right. So, Seth, 400 episodes. That's a lot of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia, I don't know how many years that is, but that's a lot of episodes, a lot of years. I want to thank both of you for all the time that you spent with us, and it's awesome having you back here. Well, thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. And uh, to another 400 episodes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, Seth, if people want to follow you on the Internet, where can they go? Uh, they can check me out. I'm Seth Clifford on most of the social things. And if you want to check out our site, nickelfish.com. And once in a while on Iterate. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Renee and Mark and I try to get Iterates out as regularly as possible. And we've got some good ones slated coming up. So keep an eye out for those. Awesome. Georgia, what about you? Uh, of course, there's Zen in Tech, and you can follow me on Twitter. It's Georgia underscore Dow, D O W, and of course on Armor.com. And I want to thank you again. You and Serenity Caldwell and Jesse Char and Brianna Wu were fantastic on the last episode of Debug. Um, and thank you so much for doing that again. Oh, it was absolutely amazing. <laughs> and I love the feedback from getting it, and it was a really enjoyable show to do. So thank you for having me on it. Awesome, and hopefully we'll have all you guys back again soon. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. You can find me at Rene Ritchie on all the social things. You can find me at imore.com and at mobilenations.com. You can also find Peter at Flarg, F-L-A-R-G-H, uh, and at imore.com, of course. The best way to experience the show is absolutely live, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, currently 9 p.m. British summertime. If you can't join us live, you can also find the show available on demand, both audio and video on iTunes and RSS, and video as well on YouTube. Just look for The I More Show. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us each and every week. You are absolutely what makes this show so 
um, amazing for us to do. We have some changes coming. I'll let you know all about those in a blog post soon. But until then, thank you for 400 amazing episodes, and here's to 400 more.